Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to June's masterclass. You've got myself, you've got Talon here. Uh, we're going to let some folks continue to trickle in. We are stoked you are here with us. Uh, in the chat, let us know where you are uh, zooming in from. We'd love to hear. Um, I'm based up in northern Idaho, where it has finally warmed up. So able to finally see some dirt, which is which is amazing. Um, yeah, let us know where you're where you're tuned in from. Uh, Town, where are you tuning in from today? I'm finally at home, which is rare. So I'm coming at you guys from Denver, Colorado, right now. Right on. Yeah, usually you're you're on the road, right, in the van. Yeah, the first time we did this, I was in like Western Colorado. So it's good to be home with internet. That should hopefully work this time, which is nice. Always a plus. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so continue. Uh, we'll, we'll get started here in just a minute uh, while more folks continue to join. And don't worry, your audio and video are turned off. Um, so we won't be able to see you. We also won't be able to hear you. But if you have questions throughout the Q&A, drop them into the Q&A section. We have a whole team there who's dedicated to answering your questions. Um, so in the chat, let us know what's up, your stoke level. But if you have questions, drop them in the Q&A uh, so the team can uh, get to that when, uh, when possible. Um, so uh, we'll get started here. Tonight, you have myself, Andy Zelinski, uh, based uh, currently in North Idaho. I am the off-road product marketing manager and my co-host, Talon. Talon, say what's up. What's going on, guys? I'm Talon Sai, uh, professional adventure, I guess, content creator. I travel the country and go on some pretty wild adventures all over the place. Give us a, what's the, what's the most wild adventure as of recent? Uh, recently, I did a series kind of using the new route builder feature where we, me and my buddy called the series the parking on ledges tour. And we went from Colorado through Utah down to Overland Expo West. And we found some wild trails and all of our parking spots and campsites for the night were right on the edges of very tall cliffs. So I did like a five part series on that and route builder. So that was pretty wild. That's sick making me jealous. Cool. Um, so what's on the docket for tonight for you guys? Uh, we're going to go over a full web map overview. So uh, that is specifically on the desktop. So if you guys have a laptop or desktop available, open that up, follow along. Um, it's always great to learn in real time with the experts. And then we'll move over to uh, the app. Most of the functionality between desktop and app uh, remains uh, with pretty high level parity, but there are some nuance in terms of how you plan a trip, how you go about executing the trip, which we'll get into. We'll save a little bit of time for live Q and A's. So if there's a burning question that our team did not get to in the Q and A section, We'll answer that live. And then for you faithful folks who are viewing to the end, we've got a giveaway. So stay tuned for that. So with that talent, I'm going to hand it off to you. All right. Let me get a screen share going. Uh, is there anything in particular you want me to dive into first? Yeah, let's go through and just kind of work our way from left to left to right or my left um probably the viewers left as well so discover trails around around you and how you're going about finding trails okay cool so this is going to be a pretty high level as if you guys have never seen onyx before so starting up here in desktop and this is also available on phone like andy mentioned you have this discover tab right here so depending on the area that you're looking at on the map, um, I'm currently looking at Colorado right here, and you can tell that there's a lot of closures on the map because they are in orange. The green, tra green trails are generally open, and then any of the blue trails are going to be the featured trails. So I'll just zoom in, let's say on this area right here, take a closer look at some open stuff, and then we'll click discover up in the left-hand corner there. So now this is showing me all of the featured trails, which are going to give you 
the best possible data for finding trails, finding campsites, just getting out and getting off road. So um, you can kind of search through here and see the technical rating right on here. So depending on your comfort level driving off road or your vehicle's capability, you can find something that's suited for your vehicle. So although uh, these are closed right here, I'm gonna click on one that's a little more technical. I like trails that are generally like five and up based off of the Onyx ratings. So when I click on that trail, it takes me right to it. And as we can see, thanks to trail reports, there is a temporary closure. So the gate is closed. And if you click on that, you can actually see who submitted it, what they were driving and the reason for the closure. Uh, back to the overview tab on the left hand side here, you get all of your trail data, the distance, high point, low point, the difficulty, and the total time that it's going to take you moving at a pretty average pace. Uh, I find that that tends to vary depending on the conditions of the trails, but this is going to be the basics of the discover tab, which will allow you to find places to go initially. Um, when we scroll down more, these are again for the blue featured trails, you have an overview of people who have gone out and actually mapped these trails and they'll give you a little bit more detail about what you're working with. And then a lot of times there will be photos like this too. Photos in Onyx is something that I feel like is a little underrated. I like to take photos at all of the waypoints that I create and campsites that I save. So you can actually upload your own photos when you're creating your own content on here. And we'll jump into the My Content tab in a little bit. So again, difficulty rating, you can see the technical rating, five. So this one will be right in the middle there for someone who's generally comfortable off-road. You have an elevation map, directions to get there. And then again, nearby trails, if you are looking to link a few trails together for a longer adventure. Down in the bottom is where you can get directions. When you're doing this on mobile, you can get directions and open turn-by-turn uh, -turn directions in the app of your choice. So whether it's Google, Waze, whatever it may be, you can actually navigate to a trailhead with the get directions button down here. Uh, this is also where you can add a trail report and share a featured trail like this with your friends if you know you're gonna meet at a certain place. So I think that about covers the Discover tab. There is quite a lot of information here. Um, and you can also filter the map before you even get into this to pick out your specific vehicle that you're driving in. Now, I guess we'll work down the left-hand side here uh, because now I guess it just makes sense. So offline maps is next. This is going to be good for getting home, obviously, and also when you're traveling into really remote areas, remote trails, campsites, and things like that. So if you want to create an offline map, let's just, uh, let's pick a trail that's actually open. How about this one right here? Muddy Pass and Piney Guard Station. So that one's closed. Let's not do that one. <laughs> a lot of stuff is closed in Colorado right now, unfortunately. How about this area here? This trail is open, so four out of 10. So Dotsero Crater. I'm gonna go back into the offline maps on the left-hand side here, and I'm going to click Create a New Offline Map. Now it's gonna give you three different choices here. I'm gonna first name it, Dotsero, and you can do a low resolution, which is going to give you a smaller download, obviously, and a larger area and then medium and also high. So on the highest resolution, I can still fit this whole trail in, which is nice. And it gives me a little bit of surrounding data as well. I don't mind having larger download sizes. So I'm going to opt for the highest resolution. It gives me a 10.2 by eight mile square here. And then I can put some notes and I'll say trail one as if i'm about to create a whole route so now i can click save 
Now, when I open Onyx on my phone, I can actually go in and make sure the map is downloaded. Everything that I'm doing here on my computer is going to transition over to my mobile app. And that's going to allow me to have everything that I'm creating here while I'm in the comfort of my home, gives me all of that information while I'm out on the trail. You can then sort these things. You can find them again under your My Content tab. And that's actually what we're going to dive into next. And Andy, uh, real, real quick, Talon, um, one thing that I, I think a uh, few folks would be curious about, because this is all, this is one of the most <clears throat> popular and useful tools um, that we have. Can you walk through um, just your your methodology for how, why you're choosing the size of a map and um, and and how you're drawing or or how you are designating what area or what zone? Is going to qualify for what is offline because um, this becomes this becomes a very very highly questioned uh, topic. Yeah, for sure. So uh, again, it kind of depends on the space on whatever device you're using. I generally like to opt for the highest resolution, although it's the smallest um, like square footage or I should say acreage that you're going to be getting. So the reason I like to choose the highest quality is because when I am on mobile and say I don't have any reception out at this place, because I've downloaded all of this area, I'm going to be able to zoom in just like right now when I have a pretty good internet connection. And it will give me all of the data that's captured here, as well as give me the satellite 3D mode. So when I pop into 3D mode, which is down here on the right hand side where I just clicked, um, offline maps will actually allow you to access this data too, which is really useful. So obviously everything looks flat in the 2D mode, but now I can see the start of this trail kind of climbs up through a canyon. It's also really easy to find campsites this way. So if we take this trail out a little bit and we're looking at BLM land right here, uh, a lot of times you'll find little things like this right here. It's a little offshoot of a trail and there's a good chance that you're able to camp there because it is BLM land. Obviously, that's going to vary everywhere you go, and you should check out the area, read signage and stuff as you're out on a trail. But for the most part, offline maps, I'm downloading high resolution. And then a lot of people will probably ask, well, what do you do if the trail is longer than what I have downloaded here? My simple fix for that is I will go into offline maps, say I wanted to connect from gypsum all over to Dotsero and then up to Coffee Pot Road here. If a high resolution map, and this is just something that I do, if this isn't going to cover it for my needs, I'll take another screenshot here or an offline map, and I'll just kind of butt them right up to each other, kind of like this. And then I'll again name this coffee pot, I can put another note, and then I'll save that. Now, I have this whole area downloaded, and I'll basically just save a bunch of high resolution maps. Uh, if, you, if you're not really interested in like all of the data being there, and you just want to see the general outline of the trail and the topography, the lower resolution ones are fine. And of course, you cover a wider area when using that. So if you guys have any more questions on that, just drop them in the chat and Andy, you can just let me know as I'm going through it all. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, and then one thing to note, because his download time, uh, which is a testament to your great Wi-Fi right now, uh, <laughs> it, it's pretty much automatic. If you see uh, a red kind of candy cane square, that means that the, the map has not fully downloaded yet. So as you're seeing, this on his screen, the green squares indicate a successful download offline map. So make sure to know that that map is fully downloaded before you decide to bail into the backcountry um, where you are out of range uh, to make sure that you have access to that offline map. Yeah, and another note on that, I've actually done that by accident where I downloaded stuff on the computer. So I made some offline maps. And then when we got out onto the trail, I didn't open it on my phone to make sure that everything had downloaded properly. So you're definitely going to want to make sure that 
everything that you downloaded is here on your phone before you actually get out. So I guess that's a pretty good segue into the My Content tab. So I have those two downloaded maps there. Just below Offline Maps on the left-hand side here, we're going to click on My Content. And this is where you can find all of the content that you yourself generated while using Onyx. So of course, I can click all of my content right here. I have some waypoints for where I would start a trail, which can all be color coded, and we can dive into that in a little bit. Um, if you are recording your tracks through the mobile app, all of that stuff will populate here, your areas, your lines, and your routes as well. Um, I actually like to create folders sometimes, especially when I'm doing a big trip. So right here, I have a folder for my next trip. So here you can see those waypoints that I had, as well as a route builder route that I created. So I basically linked all of these together. I took each piece of content, this waypoint, this waypoint in the middle, this one towards the end of the trail, and then the route that I built itself compile those all into this folder. And what's cool about that is I can take that folder and share it with my friends who are gonna be joining me on that trip. So um, this is a, a very new Onyx account here, but in my personal Onyx account, my content tab is filled. Like I have so many waypoints, so many routes built out, and it's something I hold very close to me because there's a lot of cool stuff that I've created and kind of compiled after using Onyx off-road for so long. So if there, Andy, if there's any questions on that, let me know and I can elaborate. Uh, uh, no, I would say um, it was it was all clear. Uh, I, I would ask a follow-up question just in terms of your methodology when it comes to, because I, I see this as a really useful planning tool. So before I'm heading out on the trail, I want to have all of my information kind of gathered, my content organized. What is your mindset? So if you were to like build out a trip, what is your mindset for creating um, the content uh, and where you're placing that content and organizing? And then do you ever share the, the folder out with other, other group mates? Yeah, so I actually just, um, I used all of these tools in the My Content tab when I just did that Parking on Ledges tour that we talked about in the beginning. So I kind of start by creating a rough draft, if you will, of where we want to go. And I'm primarily going out for overlanding. I want to have really cool campsites. And if possible, I'd like to have really interesting trails to get there. So Fire roads and dirt roads and stuff are cool, but generally I like to link up campsites together with technical trails. So um, I'll basically kind of just scout the areas that I want to go. If I know of a really cool spot to camp, I'll basically mark my campsites first and then I'll go back through. So like this example here, there's a campsite right here under this waypoint. So I figured what's the best way to get there? This was a very easy in and out to uh, to do that. So I marked the start of the trail and the end of the trail where I'll be exiting. But if I wanted to explore more throughout this trip, what I would do is actually go back to the offline maps. And then I would create another map here of the area. So in this case, we can try to do a lower resolution. It's not changing the size right now. But Basically, I would download this area, and then that way, if we get to our campsite and we want to explore further, then instead of taking the route that I created, I would hop back out and kind of explore all of the other data that I already have access to on my phone without having internet connection, which is pretty neat. So then when everything is then saved in the content tab, of course, route builder, which we can talk about. Um, so I have waypoints, I have a route built. I'll put all of those into a folder like this. And now if I have some friends joining me for this trip on my phone, I can share this entire folder and it will actually populate on their map, giving them the same waypoints with photos and other notes that I've created. And it's just a really, really good way to plan trips when you're doing something like a day, two days, a week long. 
Love it. Okay, cool. Uh, before we move on, one thing to note to the audience, uh, when you just talked about sharing the folder, um, and yeah, someone's asking, how do you share the folder? So as I talk through this, um, Talon will follow his cursor, but uh, effectively, there's a share button down there. You click share, and you can copy the link. You can also uh, text it from mobile. Um, right now, as you can see on that window, it says view only. We are just rolling out a new feature to where the recipient of the folder um, will be able to not only view, but then copy the folder as a secondary folder that is uh, specific to them. And they can go in and make edits that won't mess up the original folder created by Talon or whoever the group leader is. So that way you can uh, begin to make the trip kind of your own, uh, make your own memories, whatever the case might be. Currently though, as you share a folder, it will be read only, um, but that new feature is releasing over the next uh, couple of weeks. So stay tuned, make sure you're going to the App Store or Google Play, getting those updates because we are constantly pumping out new features. So right on. Yeah, that'll be cool because whenever I'm creating these routes, I'm generally doing it with my friends like sitting around me. Um, so it would be cool to kind of do it real time together. That way we can kind of pick our own spots and figure out what would work best for the group. So that'll be neat. So going back to the left side tabs here, the next one under my content is my garage. And this is something that is actually available on uh, Andy, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it is available on mobile now, I believe. Uh, it's it's beginning to roll out. It's not quite available to everybody. So okay. you might see it because because you're a special friend of the brand. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but no, so my garage right now is desktop only, but uh, continue, continue to go. Okay. So under your my garage tab, this is where you can actually create profiles for the vehicles that you're taking out, whether it's a sprinter van or a Tacoma in my case, or maybe a dirt bike, snowmobile, whatever it may be. So when you are filtering the map, you can actually do it really easily just by clicking on the keys. So to elaborate on that a little bit more, we're going to look at, let's say my Tacoma. So this is all information that I've put into Onyx. I have a 21 Toyota Tacoma. It's a four by four vehicle. And then you can actually select what you are going to primarily be doing with the vehicle. So I'll actually edit this so you guys can see all this information here. So on the left-hand side, you can pick what type of vehicle it is. If you're taking it on single tracks, like a dirt bike, 50 inch wide trail, 60 for all you side-by-side -side guys, snowmobile trails, Again, if you're on a snowmobile and then what type of surfaces you would like to drive or ride this vehicle on. So for my Tacoma, I just have everything selected here because although in uh, Colorado right now, we still have some pretty deep snow. I don't mind going and finding some snowy areas to see if we can get stuck and then get unstuck. Uh, you can upload different photos of your vehicle here. Just kind of something cool to add a little personal touch. And then here you have your opportunity to brag. So you can talk about modifications or whatever you may have done to the vehicle here. And then uh, up here next to the search bar at the top, this is where you're actually going to filter trails if you want something very specific. If I just click on the keys, everything on the map is now filtered by the parameters that I set when creating that vehicle in my garage. So you can see that everything that I just showed you is still selected here. And I guess while we're here, we might as well talk about the filter feature in general. So I'm gonna deselect that for now. If you don't have a garage built out, what you can do right here next to the search bar is simply click on the activities tab. You have dirt mode and snow mode. We're obviously gonna focus on dirt right now because it's summer in most places. So this is where you can pick what type of trails you're looking for. And then if you are an elite member, you have access to private and public land data, obviously. So you can turn that stuff off if you feel like the map is too busy. Um, I find that a lot of people who download Onyx to try it out, they can be overwhelmed because there is a ton of data here. So 
you can actually turn off a lot of layers if you want to really focus in on the content that you're trying to find. So you have private land data as well as wildfire data, which is really nice, especially out here in the West. And then of course you have a map legend, which will give you all the information that I talked about earlier on. So blue trails are gonna be the featured trails and then high clearance four by four trails will be green, just like the full width, but they'll have little dash marks on them. So you can find all of the information about what you're actually looking at here in the map legend. And I think this is a good tool for people who are really just starting to use Onyx. Um, you can find trailheads, dispersed camping, all of these recreation sites down here on the left-hand side. So there's a lot, a lot of information here. And the more you use Onyx, the more familiar you will get with it. So, yeah, as you as you move on, I will say uh, for anyone who's watching, I would I would highly highly recommend doing exactly what uh, Town said. Get familiar with a map legend. It's one of those tools that uh, seems so fundamental, but answers a lot of questions. So make sure you get familiar with the map legend. Um, before we move on, would you uh, mind kind of giving us like the most complicated view of the map, the com complex view of the map, and then show us like how you simplify? Because I, I think that's a really great shout and something we do hear a lot of around. There's a lot of information. How do I see exactly what it is I want to see? Yeah, so here is kind of a high level view of all of the trail types showing. So especially in this spot in the Rocky Mountains of Colorado, it kind of looks like spaghetti noodles. So the best way to kind of filter this to see something very, very simple would be probably single track. So if I select single track here, you'll notice a lot of that information went away. And now we can zoom into areas where it's probably gonna be good for dirt bike riding or maybe even side by sides occasionally. Let's actually add 50 inch wide trails to that too. So now you can see we have way less data than before, but just the information that you're looking for. So um, if we zoom in even further too, uh, I actually, the, the private land data to me doesn't really bother me. I actually like when I know that I'm on privately owned land because especially out here and out west in general, there are some forest service roads that do cut through private land and it's basically the landowner allowing that or it's grandfathered in from when they had the property. But if you wanted to get rid of all of this private land data, you can also turn that off as well. That way you're really just getting the type of land that you're in. So if I click on the map anywhere, you'll notice that this is national forest land highlighted in green here. Um, if you see something purple like this, this is a national park. So Rocky Mountain National Park is right here. Um, state parks are in this like bluish color. So this is all stuff that I know just from using it quite often. But again, like Andy said, the more you learn that map legend, the easier this stuff will be to actually figure out for yourself. So uh, I'm going to go back to just all of the data all at once. And I guess next up is elite benefits. You want to talk about elite benefits? Yeah. So <clears throat> um, elite is nothing new. Uh, we have three tiers of membership. Uh, basic, which is free. And by basic, it really truly is basic. You're getting very little um, data and value prop with uh, a free membership premium, which is $30 a month. You're getting most of the features, but we do reserve a few features uh, and probably some of the highest impact features for the elite members, which is $100 a year annual subscription. And we just rolled out um, what we're calling the elite member benefits, which is an exciting uh, opportunity for us to offer partner brands to you guys through uh, being a, an elite member. So as you can see, when you click on the elite uh, benefits tab, 
you're going to see all of the partners that we have um, that we have on contract. So Dometic, Method, Warn, Roof Nest, to name a few, uh, and you'll get exclusive deals uh, that they are running with partnership with Onyx Off Road. Um, and yeah, so that's that's an opportunity just to get more information on the elite benefits that are rolling out to the product. I will say there are a few that I'm specifically excited about, especially as I'm kind of working my way through some some builds with my uh, Land Cruiser. So be definitely updating um, with some new uh, shocks and then some new some new tread as well. If you click on View All Elite Deals. Oh, take you to our uh, elite member page. Yes, Land Cruiser, I agree. Uh, Land Cruiser for life, even though my Land Cruiser is giving me a headache right now. But I digress. Uh, there's a whole elite page to unpack everything you get with an elite uh, membership. So check that out if you're interested. And then back on the web map, uh, Talon, uh, one thing to also call out, if you want and in, in, uh, in, in see that private land data is valuable, that is an elite only uh, value proposition, um, which again, as Talon mentioned, it is arguably one of the most important, sometimes overlooked features um, where I'm based in Northern Idaho. There's a lot of forest road that cuts through private parcel and you kind of don't want to get stuck camping there because it would not be good. Um, but uh, yeah, that's an elite uh, value prop. And then we also have Another feature coming out midsummer that is going to be super exciting, but especially for trip planning, but that's going to be an elite only feature. I can't quite talk about it now, so I'm just going to leave that out there as a teaser, uh, but be sure to check it out. Um, so yeah, let's move our way over to the tool section. All right, so over here in the upper right hand corner is where you're going to find Tools that most of us are going to be familiar with, but again, if this is your first time looking at Onyx, the first tool here is Route Builder. This is one of the newest tools over here in the toolbar, and this is going to allow you to create these trips that I've been talking about to basically link up different trails, different campsites, and kind of put everything together in a nice package. You're creating all this content, putting it in folders, and then you can share it with your buddies that you're going out with. So if I click on the route builder tool, I'm just going to make this one generic. I'll call it new route. You can color code all of this stuff, just like all the waypoints that you create. So let's make this one bright pink. You can change the style of what the route is going to look like. So dotted dash lines, you can change the weight of the lines and add notes and add it to folders as well. So now on the map. Um, I actually like to pre-plan a little bit before I even get into Route Builder. So do you want me to hop into that first, Andy, as if I'm like doing this real time? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, so I'm going to cancel this for now. So down here, some more tools. We have a draw line and measure distance tool. So if you want to see how far it is from the north side of Moab down to the south side of Moab, this gives me a straight line, about 1.2 miles. Pretty easy feature to use. It also gives you a free draw option as well. So this is stuff that you can name and it will populate in your My Content tab. Next up, we have a draw shape or a measure area tool. I find this more useful for um, like checking out your own personal land. That's kind of how I've used it before, but this is basically going to be the same as the draw line tool, but you can create all different types of shapes here. So I'm going to check out this whole area. It shows you the acreage, how many yards from point to point. So if you're mapping out your own property, um, which is how I've used this in the past. You can actually create a plot of land like this and save that under your content tab as well. Again, all sorts of customization. You can change the fill color and the lines of the area that you're creating. And just another cool feature, um, it's just at your disposal. You can use that all the time. So now next up is going to be the waypoint. This is probably my most used tool when I am using Onyx. So let me click on the waypoint tool, add a waypoint. 
Now I'm going to create kind of a fake route right now, something I've actually done in the past though. I'm gonna drop it at the start of this trail here. For anyone who's familiar with Moab, this is gonna take you up into the sand flat wreck area. So I'm gonna drop a waypoint there. It's gonna call it sand. We'll make it a yellow waypoint and it's a four by four area. So I'll use this icon. There are a ton of icons. So if I click more here, you can create waypoints for everything. Caves that you find, fishing holes, general riding areas, gas stations, hot springs. I mean, you name it, there are a ton of icons here. And it seems like you guys at Onyx are constantly adding stuff to this, which is really cool. When I'm dropping waypoints, uh, if I haven't been to the area yet, when I get out there, generally, again, like I said, I will snap a photo on my phone and then add it to that waypoint. That way in the future, if it's a really cool campsite and I want to go visit it again, I can click on that waypoint in the My Content tab, and then I can actually remember what it looked like. So I'm going to create a route here based off of waypoints. So I'm going to actually I want to keep that. So I'm going to save that. Now I'm going to act like I'm riding a dirt bike. So let's go to single track. We'll hit done. Now, as we just kind of showed you earlier, the map is way more consumable. A lot of people will like this feature because you can get rid of anything that is like two track and high clearance four by four trails. So now right here is a slick rock trail, I believe. So you can actually click on that and yeah, Slick Rock Trail Practice Loop. So there's the practice loop and then there's the full loop out here with Mickey's Hot Tub and all these kind of famous spots here in Moab. So say I just want to run the practice loop and I'm taking my dirt bike out. I'm going to drop another waypoint here at the trailhead. Uh, I know I clicked four by four on the last one, but I should have clicked dirt bike. <laughs> so we'll save that. We'll say trailhead. And now there's a little offshoot in the back of the practice loop here where you can kind of look down into the canyon. I know that's a cool spot. So I'm gonna create another waypoint by clicking on the tools. Put that waypoint right where we wanna stop. Call that lookout. Keep it all the same here in yellow. So now I have a general idea of where I want to go, assuming I'm gonna be starting in town over here. So, uh, if there's any questions on creating waypoints, let me know throughout this, but we're going to jump back to the top tool here, Route Builder. I'm going to call this Sand Flats. Can't type. Uh, we're going to do a pink line. We'll make it dash with a heavy weight. Hopefully you guys can see it a little bit better that way. Now, I'm going to say I'm starting here in the center of town. Simply just clicked and it created my first point for this route. Now up here, you will notice kind of where my cursor is underneath the filters. You have a snap to function and a point draw function. You can edit the route, you can undo points or lines that you've created and you can clear the entire route. So right now I have it on snap to, and this is my favorite way to use route builder. This is going to, of course, snap the line to known roads and trails in the area. So I have my first point here in the center of town. I'm going to come over to my first waypoint that I dropped and kind of click in that vicinity. Now, these are actually separate from each other, so it's not going to snap directly to the waypoint. And I'll kind of show you guys a little bit more on that later. So I'm going to continue building this route. I'm going to come up here to my next waypoint that I dropped. You'll notice that if I go a little bit north of there, it's going to take me in a different route, but I want to stay on the main road till I get to the trailhead and then say we'll unload bikes and we're going to start our trek out to this first split in the trail here. If it's going to cooperate with me. And go up a little bit further there. Okay, it's not cooperating with me. I'm going to undo that point. All right, it wants me to go in this way for some reason. Maybe Andy has a, uh, a fix for this, but we're going to come in the back side of this route then. Now I'm going to come over to the lookout point, and we're going to backtrack to this turn. 
And then if you want to, you can connect right back to where you started, or I'm just going to connect back to the trail that we came in on. And now we have this route built. You can click save. And now we have all of this content that I just created in one spot. So one thing that uh, I found out recently is that if I'm coming in here to look at the featured trail data, my route that I built is sitting on top of it. So if I click on it, you'll notice that the route that I built pops up, but that's not the information that I want right now. So over here, where you see all the information of your route, it gives you elevation, coordinates of where you're at. I can actually hide that on the map. Now, when I come back over, I can click on the featured trail and look at all the data. So these are actually on separate layers of themselves. And then if you want to see something specific, you can filter the map by specific content that you've created. So I guess to tie all this together, let's go over back to the My Content tab. Now I'll go down to Routes, and that new route that I just created is right here. You'll notice that it has a little eye icon. I can click on that, and it shows back up on my maps. So I'm actually going to take this. I'm going to add it to a folder. Call it Sand Flats. Root was added to my folder. So now back to the content, can go to my waypoints that I've created. Definitely want to have the lookout included in that folder. So I'll add that to Sand Flats folder. Back on the left-hand side here, this is basically the start of where you're heading up into that area to ride. I'll add that to the folder as well. Now, right here, I have the Sand Flats folder. And it has all the information that I just added to it. So now I basically built a route that quickly. Now I can just click share and send that to whoever I'm going riding with. Then when they open that up in Onyx, they have all of that data and it's really easy to kind of follow along. And if you get separated, it gives you good places and good content to actually figure out where you're going to be meeting. Um, Go ahead, Andy. No, that was great. I, I would say uh, one more time because I this is really helpful for a lot of questions we've gotten in the past. Um, so as you mentioned, the route is sitting on top of the blue feature trail. The blue feature trail offers very specific information, which makes it a compelling one reason to run the trail because you got a lot of data and detail. Um, but you're not getting all of that detail pulled through when building the route. So uh, walk us through one more time how you are accessing that information, because for anyone out there, you can see how quickly uh, you can build the route. It's literally a minute of clicking around, build your ideal route. But there might be a scenario in which you're building uh, on top of a trail and maybe you, uh, you know, maybe the trail it has a high difficulty rating that you're, you just kind of overlooked and you weren't quite prepared for that. So it's really important just to do the double click and make sure that you are planning an accurate route for not only your vehicle, but the time out on trail. So how do you do that one more time? Yeah, so one more time, if I want to get info on this trail that the route has been built over, I'll simply click on it. It's going to pull up the route first because that's generally like sitting on top. And now over on the left hand side here, again, this shows you the elevation of the entire route. It gives you the distance, the elevation. It's kind of cool to see too, as I run my cursor over here, you guys can kind of see the different points that it's marking out. So if you're like looking over here at the lookout, let's see, that looks like we're at about 4,500 feet. Just kind of a cool feature there. If you want to get rid of this to see the data underneath, right below that, just click hide on map. And now I can click on the featured trail and get all of that information that we talked about in the beginning. Perfect. Yeah, um, maybe quickly hit on 3D. I know uh, just for everyone out there, 3D, when we, when we try to do it on screen can be a little dicey. So bear with us as we show 3D and then we can pop over to mobile to round us out. Yeah, so let's actually take a look at what this little lookout 
kind of is going to look like in 3D. So down in the right-hand corner here, you have your compass for North Lock. And that's actually something that we should probably talk about too. I generally like to have my map locked with North pointed directly up, which is just more natural. You got your zoom in and out buttons right here. Right underneath that, you're gonna have a way to select how you're looking at the map. So over on the right-hand side here, you have just a simple topo map. So if you're good at reading topography and maybe you don't wanna have all of that information on there, this is another way to make things look a lot more simple. It looks like you're looking at an old atlas that your dad kept in the back of his truck. Next from that is going to be the hybrid map. So that is going to give you the topography lines as well as the satellite imagery. And then satellite is going to give you just the satellite imagery. And this is where you can actually switch from 2D mode into a 3D map. So hopefully this will work for you guys who are watching right now, but on my screen, it looks great. I can zoom into this and kind of see where that little lookout is. And I can tell that we're looking down through this canyon and you can probably almost see all the way out to the Colorado River here, which you can see right underneath the search bar. So it's pretty cool, especially when you're changing the exaggeration of the 3D elevation. So if I drag this up, it might freak out the internet a little bit, but this is going to make the elevation a little bit more extreme. That way, if you're on relatively flat land, you can kind of get an idea of what the shape of the land is actually doing. Uh, what's really cool too is just like, I mean, I'm looking at maps all the time. So in my free time, I'll kind of just scroll around in 3D mode and it kind of looks like you're flying on a helicopter. But just in this area here, this purple area is Arches National Park. You can actually zoom in in some areas and find arches, which is kind of cool. Kind of besides the point of today's topic, but uh, it's really cool data. And you can see all sorts of really neat topography, rock climbing areas over here. There's just so much cool information that you can see by using this. Yeah, I mean... 3D and, and what we're doing with 3D right now is probably one of my favorite features. It's I can geek out on it all day long. Yeah, me too. I'm in, in that same boat. Um, so let's just switch back to a normal mode here. We'll go back to hybrid 2D. Uh, over here on the bottom left-hand side, this is where you're going to find your information about your account. So your subscription level, whether it's free or you're a basic user. Uh, or if you have elite membership, it's going to show you when you became an elite member, when it expires and stuff like that. Uh, one thing that I find pretty useful is clicking on settings here. And you can change a lot of stuff both on the computer and on your cell phone. So I'm using Onyx all the time when I'm off-road. I have my phone mounted on my dash and I'm kind of zooming around and looking at things. And oftentimes... I will like spin the map and I'm a little disoriented. So on mobile, there's actually a way to keep it in 2D mode all the time. There's a north lock feature so you can actually lock the direction so that it's always north. Those are some things that I like to turn on. Um, and then you can even filter the map more here so you can show custom waypoint names and crosshairs and stuff like that. So you know exactly what you're over top of before you zoom in. Uh, you can hide coordinates because, I mean, for my case, I'm telling you guys exactly what we're looking at here. But down here in the right hand side, it's where you'll find your coordinates. So um, if you're ever looking for something in particular, you're like, ah, I wish the map didn't do this or I wish it did something differently. When you dive into your settings, you can find a lot of features there, which I think, in my opinion, would probably go overlooked by most users. There's also a, a fast access to the legend down here as well. So if you're learning Onyx down here in the My Account and Settings tab, that legend is definitely going to be super helpful. Now, I guess the, I mean, there's so many features that we can talk about here, but uh, since we kind of worked our way all the way around the screen here, down in the right-hand corner, it's gonna give you your weather data, your wind data, things like that. So um, 
where I'm at. Let's actually let's actually take a look at what the conditions are on this trail here. So when I click on the trail, if I scroll down to oh, it's actually different on here. That's right. On uh, on mobile, and Andy can probably show you guys this, but you can see the weather of the trail. So um, this will this is generally what it's going to look like if you're planning a trip and you're going out in say two days. You can check what the weather is going to be like on that trail in two days. Uh, you can see sunrise and sunset, which is really helpful when you're camping. Chance of rain, heat indexes, air quality. I mean, there's a ton of information here. And I actually tend to use the weather information in Onyx more than I do on my phone because it just seems to be a little bit more accurate from my usage. So. You can tell right here with the crosshair icon, which I turned on, uh, this is where it's pulling the weather data from. And it's a pretty neat feature that I think is also kind of underrated when it comes to Onyx stuff. Um, are there any questions? I can pull the chat up and check out what we have going on. I got on. you, Talon. Um, a couple questions because there are some, probably some folks that join late. Um, let's hit offline maps one more time. Um, how to build an offline map, how to access an offline map. And then when you're in the field, how are you certain that that offline map is going to be tracking where you are and the reliance of it? Okay, so offline maps again is over here on the left-hand side, just underneath the discover tab. So say I want to create an offline map of this area that we've been looking at now. You can click on offline maps. You can sort them new to old, ascending, descending order, all of that. Down on the bottom here, we're going to click new offline map. So you can see kind of the blacked out grade areas. That is the information that is outside of your map. And maybe I'm doing this practice loop here, the feature trail that's kind of highlighted in blue, but maybe I want to check out the practice loop. And then if I'm comfortable, I want to have information on the rest of this loop here. This is a pretty big loop. I believe it's like 11 miles. So under the medium resolution, I can actually capture all of this data here, which is really nice. Under high resolution, I can still do that. Um, so now I selected this area, we'll call it sand flats again, because that's where we're at. Now it'll show me how big the download size is going to be. And then we'll click save. Now that downloaded very quickly, but when you're doing it on mobile, especially when you're not connected to Wi-Fi, generally it will drop down the screen and kind of show you all your offline maps. And then there will actually be a percentage showing to basically let you know when the map is fully downloaded. So you definitely want to make sure that when you're looking at your map, before you lose reception, before you get disconnected from Wi-Fi, you want your downloaded map to have a green outline like you see here. Otherwise, if it's a red kind of like striped candy cane looking outline, it's not fully downloaded yet. And these downloaded areas too, once information is being updated like trail reports and maybe some like closures or any other kind of data that will change trails, you can actually go back in and re-download the same square area that you have and kind of refresh those maps. So if you're going to a downloaded area that you have in your content, uh, you can actually make sure that they're up to date before you lose reception and head out on the trails. Perfect, okay. so. Uh, a question that just came in uh, that I think is a perfect kind of wrap because we are almost at time, everyone. Thank you for joining. But if I am new, I just downloaded the Onyx app from, from uh, the App Store. A friend recommended it. Uh, wait, Talon, where do I begin? So like if I am in the Colorado area, I'm going to be visiting, I don't know, any of the trails Give me like the three things that I need to know uh, to make my uh, experience with the app fun, enjoyable, and useful. So the first thing that I always tend to do, I mean, this is not something that you have to do, but I like to mark 
Uh, I like to start messing around with the tools uh, just to get familiar with them. And then I like to start creating content of my own. So living in Denver here, uh, I create a waypoint for like a home, a home icon. That way, if I am creating uh, a route, say from this area, I can actually start from a home waypoint and then build a route out into the trails, out into the mountains or wherever you're going to go. That'll kind of get you familiar with selecting different colors and icons and figuring out where to find that data after you created it. And then from there, if you hopefully have been to the area where you're traveling before, I like to go through the map and actually mark places that I am familiar with. So say I've been on this trail down here. Again, I have this filtered by uh, single track. So here's an area that you can find some single track for dirt bike riding. Uh, if I know that there's like a cool campsite, maybe right here, I'll come to that point and I'll just simply drop another waypoint. I'll say cool camp. Use the camp icon, color code it, save it. And then the more that you do simple things like waypoint drops, the more content that you'll create. And now it'll uh, it'll kind of ease your way into using the other tools. So if I want to test out Route Builder, which is again, a new feature, a little bit more complex, but I can say, okay, I already have this waypoint that was really easy to create over here. Now I'm gonna build a route out to that cool campsite. Simple, another click on there. And now I have a whole route built from my home waypoint all the way out to where I want to camp, I can click save. And that's more content that you've just created right there. So uh, I would say take it slow and just kind of mess with the features that you know how to deal with. And then once you get comfortable and start creating a lot of cool content, then you can start linking things together, downloading offline maps to areas that you're not familiar with. And because the uh, possibilities are pretty much endless. Right on. I got two plugs. Uh, one, before you click off the map, um, just for everyone out there, seasons change, so do trails. So make sure as you're going out and you're planning, especially after the hectic winter most of us have had, uh, go to the blue featured trails as you are planning out your next adventure, whether this weekend or the holiday coming up. Uh, go to uh, the trail reports uh, section and be sure to be adding uh, a, an appropriate trail uh, status report because there are a lot of trails that are closed due to snow. There are a lot of trails that are closed due to obstruction or, or water crossing or maybe a, uh, a unseasonal gate closure. So make sure to be doing that. The more that we can have this uh, up to date, it's kind of our way to allow the off-road community to crowdsource accurate information to make sure that one, trails stay intact and two, trails are being ran safely and successfully. So uh, be sure to get out there, um, leave a trail report um, update to the trails that you guys are running. And then I'm gonna steal the screen for what hopefully everyone is getting stoked about. And that is our giveaway. So let's go. Okay. Um, am I uptown? Do you see me? Yep, yep, I see you. Cool. So uh for you guys out there, we have 25 onyx off-road hats off camo hats. Um, no purchase is necessary, but an off uh, onyx off-road account is required. Um, a basic or free membership is just fine. Go to the bit.ly um, link that the team will drop in the chat. Click that. The entries close at midnight tonight, and then you will be notified via email if you are a lucky winner. And then uh, if you're out on the trails, we'd love to see you. We'd love to hear from you. Um, we will be on X Off-Road anyway, not Talon, but myself and a few others will be at Expo PNW in Redmond here in a few weeks. So if you're going to be in the Oregon area, come by, say what's up. We'd be stoked to meet you. Um, otherwise, have a great night. Thanks everyone for joining um, and safe travels out there. 
and go farther. See ya. Thank you.